Well, I guess it's finally time. What's up, guys? That got the pencil here, and yes, let's talk about Bakugo. I actually like him. I think he's pretty good. So, Bakugo has this fantastic thing that I like to call realism. Now, here's the thing. Is the explosions real? No. Is his superhuman ability real? No. But you know what is real? His character. And that character growth. Now, the reason I like Bakugo so much is for the same reason I like Endeavor. Because both are really, really, really determined people who want to be the number one hero. Except they were, they were, uh, they were lesser. They were not lucky enough. They did not have the power they did not have they were not blessed enough to get one for all because let's be real that's the prerequisite to being the number one hero all might midoriya it's what has to happen sorry both of them were not born lucky enough but you know what makes it good in bakugo's case he was born lucky he was born with a powerful 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 quirk explosion Ooh, it's flashy it's bright turns out to be strong later in life it's really really good and this is where we get back into My Hero Academia, the society, why I think is the best part, because Bakugo could not exist without it. Bakugo, the fantastic character that he is, was molded by the world around him. He was viewed as the best, so obviously he has to be, right? Like, everyone's saying it, so he has to be the best of the best. But the thing is, when you give the child, when you give any child, really, that mentality, they sort of start to throw away people they view lesser than them. And, you know, who happens to be lesser than a person in a quirk-filled society? Someone who's quirkless, like Midoriya. So, that must make a whole lot of sense that Bakugo would look down on Midoriya. Bakugo wouldn't respect Midoriya. Bakugo would, in fact, be insulted by the fact that in his mind, and in everyone else's mind, a lesser being like Midoriya would even dare to extend his hand to him. Because what would Midoriya be able to do? Midoriya didn't have a quirk. Who the heck was Midori? Midori was whack. And that's a fantastic place for a character to start off. Now, you may be wondering, wait, why is that a good place for a character to start? And the reason I say it's a good place for a character to start is because a character can grow from that point. They can grow to realize their biases are wrong. And that's my favorite thing about Bakugo. Because, to be fair, he's not wrong. Quirkless people are, in most cases, unless the quirk is actively damaging to the user with no real benefit whether it be socially, financially, or especially physically, the main issue with quirkless people is that they are actually inferior, biologically inferior. That's like being born without an arm. Yes, you can function, you can move, you can do all the things that other people can do, but you can't fly. You can't blow things up. You can't do anything. Midoriya, for a fact, was worse than Bakugo biologically by sheer nature due to Bakugo having a quirk and Midoriya not having one. So for the Bakugo to develop that mentality is not only realistic in the sense that the entire world did it to him because that's the common way, but it's also realistic because it's literally like that Bakugo was superior to him. And the great thing about that is that when the inferior finally got that arm, when the inferior finally got that quirk, it broke Bakugo. And there may, this may be something that I just personally enjoy, but imagine this. Imagine you have a set worldview. You've had that worldview for over a decade. You had a friend who also believed that worldview, and that same worldview that that friend believed that was proposed by that friend is what you've been living by for, like I said, around a decade. And suddenly, that worldview was shattered, and not in just any small way. Remember, Midoriya didn't develop a minor quirk. He didn't develop something weak. Out of nowhere, Midoriya went from zero to a thousand. He went from no quirk at all to one of the most, if not the most powerful quirk Bakugo had ever seen outside of All Might himself. Imagine that. Imagine your worldview just shatters, punctured open. But then, you maybe still have hope. Maybe something's wrong. Maybe there's something strange going on. So you, like Bakugo, want to see it yourself. Like, sure, Midoriya threw that ball really, really far. Threw it just as far, if not a little bit farther than you. A little bit farther than Bakugo. But then, not on top of that, on top of all of that, 
you fight him. And then he spares you. The being that you viewed as inferior to you for over a decade spares you. Because if they had actually hit you, you would have died. This face, this face right here sums up exactly what Bakugo was thinking and exactly what Bakugo's entire mindset looked like the moment he found out Midori got a quirk. And it works perfectly. Because, to be fair, that's how a regular human being would react. If you were in Bakugo's situation, you would probably react that way too. I would react that way. I know that. Imagine that. That is insane. But while Bakugo's perception shattered, it doesn't erase his pride. Bakugo still wants to be the number one hero. And he'll still push for that. He'll still work for that. He can see that Midoriya doesn't have control. Bakugo is an intelligent character, which is why I actually like him a lot. He notices Midoriya can't control it. So he still, for now at least, has an edge. So Bakugo, going on to absolutely manhandle a whole ton of villains in the OSJ arc, makes sense. He was already a talented kid with an extremely powerful quirk. Midoriya still doesn't have control over it. So he's pushing, he's pushing, he's pushing. And the reason I like Bakugo so much up to the next point is that he figures out the truth. He sees through the lie. The lie is that Midoriya is fully able to develop that quirk on his own a decade late. He figures it out. He realizes that All Might gave one for all to Midoriya. And then, like any other sensible person who ended up getting kidnapped and leading to the fall of the number one hero, one of his biggest fans causing that, Bakugo snaps and he's angry. But the only person he can take his anger out on is Midoriya. And I think from the one side perspective, I really, really like the fight's animation. I like the way it's drawn. I personally don't think Midoriya has much stake in the fight. The fact that this was just a coping session for Bakugo is very, very good because Bakugo beat the qualms that he had with the world around him out of through Midoriya. I think that's very, very good. I think it's solid writing, especially in a battle manga specifically. I think that's very, very good to do. You want to tell a story with every single fight. The only issue I have with that fight is it's a one-sided story. There's no real story for Midoriya. Midoriya is the plot device, which is something I went over in last week's video when I talked about Midoriya as a plot device, as a symbol rather than an actual character, because that's all he is. And why? That's okay for a main character, but I personally don't like it. The reason I like Bakugo so much is because he throws himself up against this wall, and then the wall hits him back, and it ends up shattering him. Bit by bit, you can see Bakugo fall apart. And my favorite moment of Bakugo's character, its I feel like it's a lot of people's favorite moment, is in the remedial course arc, where he sees someone like him, someone who wants to be a leader, who wants to be the number one, who wants to appear stronger and better than everyone else, and Bakugo's just like, trust me, you don't want to do it. Take it from me. That is not the way to go. Now go out there and have fun and enjoy yourself with everyone else. Because you do not want to isolate yourself like that kid. That growth. That. Beginning of the series Bakugo would have never said that. He would have agreed with the kid. Like yeah stay back. Be the leader. Because that's what Bakugo would have done. But due to all the experiences Bakugo went through. From having his worldview shattered. To losing the number one hero. Being the cause of the loss of the number one hero. Getting kidnapped. All those things that affected Bakugo as a character. Are what led to that moment. And I think that's great. I think Bakugo is great as a character. He has, he has growth. That's one of the things, that's one of the premier things that I like in characters. When they have positive change or negative change, when they change, that's what I like about characters. So, Bakugo's change, I think it's great. Now, here's the issue. Bakugo still believes he can be number one. That's, that's the only issue I have with Bakugo. And that's not even, that's not, it's weird to say that's not Bakugo's fault. But narratively, it's not Bakugo's fault because it's a lie perpetuated by the society that he lives in. And he also just believes he still has some aspects of his superiority to him, which is, makes sense. There's no way he's going to lose all that in just like about a year. However, due to this, Bakugo's locked in a weird, weird, weird position where 
He's sort of stalemated because he's not surpassing Midoriya ever. Horikoshi keeps trying to portray them as close or equal rivals, but Midoriya is still not even at half power. Bakugo still only has one quirk. Midoriya still has more quirks to unlock. There is nothing that Bakugo can do that can keep up with Midoriya, except not only is the narrative pushing that, but Bakugo believes that, and I feel like that's the next step for his character. He needs to realize that he is Midoriya's inferior now. I feel like that'd be a great full circle character transition for Bakugo. He thought he was on top because of a biological advantage, and now he needs to realize that he's on the bottom because of a biological disadvantage. He wasn't lucky enough to get all for one, and thus he's not as powerful as Midoriya and can never be the number one hero as long as Midoriya exists. I feel like once we get there, we're good, because what happened is, since Bakugo's arc was completed in the looking down on people's sense, He's locked. He's locked as a character. It's what a lot of characters in My Hero Academia face right now. I'd say Yoyorosu's facing it. I'd say Todoroki's facing it. I'd say Ida's facing it. All these characters have went through the main arc that Horikoshi wrote for them, and now they're just locked there. They're, they're not growing anymore. And it is difficult to do arcs like that, especially an arc like what Bakugo has to go through now, realizing his inferiority that he can't do anything about. However, Endeavor did it. And he did it great. So I'm waiting for Bakugo to. Once Bakugo does that, we'll be in a fantastic position for his character. I think it'll be great. I think we'll have cookies and ice cream and everything. It'll be wonderful when Bakugo does that. But for right now, when Bakugo is being treated as a joke, when Bakugo is not being respected because it's just part of him now, while it's realistic in the sense that he wouldn't lose those tendencies, it's sad to see a character go like that. It's sad to see a character not being able to grow because they still need to fulfill an empty function, basically. Like, it's just, it's sad to watch. That's the thing. And there are ways. There are ways to let rivals diverge into their own paths. Piccolo did it. Vegeta did it. It looks like Dr. Zeno's about to do it in Dr. Stone as of recent. There are ways that you can go with certain characters like this where they've completed their arcs and no, can no longer serve their function. Bakugo has been eclipsed by Midori and it's going to stay that way forever unless quirk nonsense happens. And that wouldn't be good from a narrative standpoint. So I need Bakugo to just kind of go through an Endeavor arc. I hope Endeavor is involved if Endeavor doesn't die. I hope Bakugo is involved if Bakugo doesn't die. But I doubt either of those characters are going to die. I feel like that's the next logical progression for Bakugo's character and I think despite how good he is he's just good he's not actually no he's pretty great but he's not top tier yet he's not endeavor level he's not he's not high enough and I think he can go higher so I hope Bakugo does thank you guys so much for watching uh this is just another little character analysis I'm still working on the what if series I want to get those all pre-written before I start trying to do those every Wednesday so next week I'm not sure which character I'm going to do. I like doing this duo specifically because it's a main duo. And I think as much as I didn't want to do it and as much as we wanted to save it next week, you're probably getting the problems I have with Uraraka because I think Uraraka is bad. Not OK. Not great. Not even half decent. I think she's bad. But we'll talk about that next week. Yeah, that's next week's video. But thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed and Please remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe. I hope you guys have a wonderful day, and this is That Guy with the Pencil, writing off.